Hi, this is Felipe Osario. This is just an update. Basically, I've been working on an episode for the last week. I'm trying to prove, and I really don't use this word lightly, I'm trying to prove that there are not just unbelievable connections uh, throughout the world that are not explainable, but I'm trying to ascertain the idea that these things could not have been created by modern humans, or at least, uh, you know, humans in the last 12,000 years. Why am I saying this? So I was watching this documentary called uh, Pyramids of the Revelations, totally recommended to everybody. Uh, but the thing that I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to verify all their claims. You know, they have a lot of uh, crazy mathematical claims. And I say crazy because I think that if anybody who had, a, you know, somewhat of a brain would understand that if, if they were to really truly get these connections, they would know that we didn't create these monuments. Like, I mean, I'm talking about like the Great Pyramids, um, talking about the connection of that with Teotihuacan, uh, the connection with that with Inca Watts. Really? You really think that some, you know, native were able to build Inca Watts? The biggest man-made structure at the time with no previous industrial revolution, with no previous documents d d discussing like this very advanced like i mean how what like i don't understand academics like retainment of history i think that their history is like full of holes it's like having an argument with a crazy girlfriend who constantly just c contradicts herself and uses any kind of hypocritical comments that they need just to win an argument that's what it feels that like that's where our field of archaeology feels because we have all these massive monuments that seem not even seen, they are definitely connected worldwide. When we know that the pyramids are probably older than even they tell us, 5,000 years old. If the pyramids are over 5,000 years old, right? And, I'm, and I think it's, it's maybe even more than that. But if it's older than that, why would it be geographically connected with Inca Watts if Inca Watts was created, what, like 600 years ago, supposedly? So all of that just doesn't make sense. So apparently, according to the you know pyramids of Revelation, there are numerous, and when I say numerous, we're talking about dozens and dozens of ancient monuments that seem to have all been connected geographically, possibly within a single line. You know, and I'm talking also about like you know the city of Ur, where they found all those crazy reptilian statues, uh, Inca Wat, which was the biggest man-made structure at the time. We're talking about the Great Pyramid of Giza, which n doesn't just lie on the center mass of the planet itself longitudinally and latitudinally. We're talking about something that is, we're talking about something that just doesn't make sense unless you have a more global perspective, unless you truly understand that Earth was rounded. For example, I mean, do people realize that the Great Pyramid of Giza was so precise that and was so large too that just within the 400 uh, and I believe it's 440 cubics uh, wide, which translated to um, I believe 780 something feet, that length in the base of the Great Pyramid is enough where the Earth actually curves. So Earth, I, from my from my previous calculations, curves about half an inch through the um, to the length span of the pyramid. So a half an inch, you know, I also did the trigonometry. When the half an inch starts going up, 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 all the way to the peak, I think it, it, it amounts to a little bit more than half an inch at the top. I think it's like at least three inches of a difference. There's no way that type of discrepancy can exist in the Great Pyramid of Giza. So my question is, how the hell did the Egyptians know about Earth's curvature? because they would have to take Earth's curvature into account to actually create the foundation that would allow the pyramid to race to its height to the perfection that it actually raised. So I'm like, wait a second. Okay, I know that the Great Pyramid is just this amazing structure that really doesn't have a lot of explanations as to how humans at the time were able to build it, okay? And somehow this Great Pyramid is not just at the center mass of the Earth, but it seems to connect all these other ancient monuments, right? Uh, including like the Nazca Lines. I mean, did you know that the distance from the Nazca Lines to the Great Pyramid of Giza is exactly the same as Teotihuacan, which goes from Mexico all the way 
to the Great Pyramid of Giza? How is that possible? How is it that South American culture creating pyramids, I believe is almost exactly the same base as the Egyptian culture, which was creating the Great Pyramid of Giza. I mean, how did they communicate? Were they using their walkie talkies or how they say, yo, let, let's put these structures aligned to the Orion belt. Let's make them exactly the same distance to Inca Wat. And I'm talking about to the mile. Okay. So that's not possible. It's just not possible possible for a single civilization to do that. It would require a global civilization, something that understands cosmic knowledge, the ability to connect distant points on Earth, which we did not have at the time, at least not that we know of. So look, here are my calculations. I like I just dumped myself in calculations after calculations after calculations. And it's just been like, look, guys, it, it, for me, it's it's been like nonstop the last few days. I can show it to you here, here, here. I mean, I did all of it. I did all the damn math related to the Great Pyramid of Giza, all the math related to the sites. It, let me tell you something. It's true. What the Book of Revelations is saying is true. The Great Pyramid of Giza is intimately connected with the golden ratio with the number pi, you know, and, and what amazes me is it's also connected with the speed of light. I know this sounds crazy. It's as if they actually knew what the speed of light was. You basically take the circumfer circumference of a circle that is going around the entire pyramid, around the outer corners of the pyramid, and then you create another circle that goes along the inner sides of the pyramid. So you have two different circles. Well, take the circumference of the outside circle and subtract it by the circumference of the inner circle. And what you're going to get is the speed of light. So, you know, they, Egyptians apparently didn't know mathematics. The idea the Egyptians were using these high mathematical principles to build their pyramid is it, it's not supported by your historical evidence, but it is supported by the equations. It's obvious by these equations that they did do something uh, mathematically that they shouldn't have been able to do. Also, the Egyptians somehow knew the earth was curved. They knew the earth was curved because somehow they knew earth's foundation, they knew how to adapt a foundation that would allow the Great Pyramid of Giza to be erected. So they would have to know how much that foundation dipped by. And also they knew the speed of light. Now I know the speed of light claim seems really kind of crazy, right? But also consider that the Dogon tribe from uh, West Africa, they believe in a serious star system. And they also said that there were three stars and this information, which nobody believed at the time, was only verified in 1994 by an academic paper in an astronomy journal. And it wasn't even that they saw the third star. They had to actually posit its existence by mathematical 
of postulation by basically looking at the perturbations of the stars. So if the Dagon people knew that there's three stars, why shouldn't the Egyptians know that the speed of light exists? So this is the episode that I'm working on right now. I, uh, I got behind, my, my card reader kind of broke, my, my camera's not working properly. So what I really want to do is just give you guys an update of what I'm working on right now. And, um, and just to keep you guys hanging there because you know I haven't posted in a week, but the next few episodes are gonna be absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, not do I just have all these calculations to show you guys, to prove to you guys that these ancient monuments are connected, but I may, I may have actually um, garnered an interview with the current uh, Incan princess. I, I know it sounds crazy, but uh, the Incan empire uh, though they're apparently defunct as an empire, they still have native people who meet up and appoint uh, somebody to be a placeholder for the current Incan princess. And I believe I may have gotten an interview with her, so we will be talking to the Incan princess about all these ancient connections, all these mathematical connections. So please stay tuned. Thank you for joining me in this quick update. This is Felipe Osorio. I'll see you guys next time. Signing out.